Hello friends, I am Shantanu, your coach and in this video we are going to discuss about the cost sheet. There are many students who face problem in this particular topic because they try to mug the concepts and they don't try to understand. So here in this video we are going to understand the concept of cost sheet in detail. First, we will see the some definition of the term cost sheet. So, the cost sheet is defined like it's a document showing the detailed cost. So, it's a document showing the detailed cost of a cost center or cost unit. It's a periodical report. So, basically, cost sheet is prepared periodically showing the details of the cost of, of a particular cost center or cost units. Now the main thing in the cost sheet is that it shows various components of cost of goods produced like prime cost, factory cost, cost of production, cost of goods, so total cost as well as the cost per unit of the product. Now you must be wondering what is this all about? ये सारे items क्या हैं? तो इसको हम अभी diagram की मदद से देखेंगे और table की मदद से देखेंगे कि what all these terms exactly mean. Apart from this, you also have to understand there can be a production account. Now production accounts means details of cost sheet presented in the form of an account. So if the cost sheet details are prepared in the form of account, then it is called a production account. We will talk about this production account in detail later on. For better understanding of the concept of cost sheet, I have divided the cost sheet item into three parts. Pella hai, cost of manufacture, this is one part of cost sheet. Second is cost of sales and the third is the profit. So before trying to understand all these things, try to understand the structure of an organization. Suppose this is one organization and in this part of this organization production is going on. That is the manufacturing is going on in this part of the organization. We can call it is a factory. Isko hum factory bhi keh sakte hain. Apart from factory, there is an administrative setup jahan par HR functions hote hain, jahan par administrative function hote hain, office hota hai, is organization ka. All these will come under the administrative functions or administrative departments. Iske baad ek or department hota hai, that is called a selling and distribution. So to understand the cost sheet, we can divide the whole organization first where the manufacturing activity is being carried on. Then we can talk about the factory, that is uh, the factory within which the manufacturing activity is going on. So this is manufacturing is uh, going on in a part of a factory building. After that, there is a administrative setups like accounting and HR all these offices are there so it is the administrative uh, offices and after there is a selling and distribution sales and distribution office and uh, their expenditures apart from understanding this administrative setup you also have to understand how the material moves in an organization Subse pehle, the first step the raw material, raw material comes into the factory or yaha par aapka manufacturing start ho jata hai. Now remember that there can be a opening raw material means for any particular period there can be a opening raw material and there can be a closing raw material at the end of the period. So you have to understand you can purchase the raw material, there can be an opening raw material and there can be a closing raw material. This raw material goes into the manufacturing. So at the beginning of the period, there can be an unfinished production. We call it a work in progress. We call it a work in progress means WIP. That is unfinished production. 
so there can be a opening wip and there can be a closing wip as well at the beginning of the period and at the closing of the period once goods are manufactured these are treated as the finished goods these are treated as finished goods which are ultimately sold in the public now there can be a opening finished goods opening stock of finished goods at the beginning of the period and there can be a closing stock of finished goods at the closing of the period so in short raw material turned into wip work in progress then it is converted into finished goods and then it is ultimately sold in the market now with this background we will try to understand the terms of the cost sheet first we will talk about the first part of the cost sheet that is cost of manufacture when you manufacture a particular good what will be the cost this we are going to discuss so here first you have to take the direct material consumed and direct labor so these two component together form the prime cost prime cost means the main cost now here you have to understand how to find out the direct material consumed so we are talking about here raw material there can be opening raw material for example there can be a raw material opening at the beginning of the period of rupees 2000 then you have purchased a, a raw material of let's say 50000 rupees and there is a closing raw material at the end of the period that is of rupees 12000 now you, what you have to do you have to do opening plus purchases minus closing stock of raw material so it will give you 52 minus 12 that will come 40000 rupees this is the direct material consumed now there can be a cost that is direct labor cost so it can be let's say 10000 rupees is the cost of direct labor so now you are getting the prime cost of rupees 50000 rupees for the goods manufactured during a particular period now in a factory you know that apart from direct material apart from direct material and apart from direct labor there are various overheads there are so many expenditure which we incur within the factory whatever expenditure we are incurring within the factory which is not a direct material and direct labor it will be treated as factory overheads now assume the total factory overhead during the period is 30000 rupees so now in the prime cost we are going to add the factory overhead of rupees 30000 and here comes the WIP that is the cost of unfinished product at the beginning and at the end of the period now assume that at the beginning of the period there was 10000 rupees of uh, WIP that is that material which went into the production but which could not be completed during the last period so it is the opening WIP work in progress at the beginning of the period and at the end of the period if you check the unfinished production which is still in the manufacturing process it is let's say 5000 rupees at the end of the period so WIP at the beginning of the period is 10,000 rupees and WIP at the end of the period is 5,000 rupees. What we are going to do, add the WIP at the opening, that is at the beginning of the period, that was 10,000 rupees and deduct the closing WIP. So closing WIP was 5,000 rupees. So if you add opening WIP of 10,000 and deduct the closing WIP of 5,000, you will get 35,000 rupees as the factory cost. Now when we say factory cost, it is also treated as works cost. Isko hum works cost bhi kehte hain. It is also called as works cost. So now at factory cost, we have covered all the cost within the factory for manufacturing of these goods. 
after this we have to add the cost of administrative department we call it a administrative overhead or administrative cost now assume that the administrative overhead is rupees 15000 then we have to add this 15000 rupees of administrative overhead to the factory cost so we are adding 15000 rupees to the factory cost now we are getting a figure of 50000 rupees and this is the cost of goods manufactured please remember this this is the cost of goods manufacture we are not looking into the sales till now we are not looking the finished goods which was there we just uh, talking about the manufacture during the period so whatever goods you have manufactured during the period the cost of goods uh, manufactured is 50000 rupees it means it includes all the cost within the factory and it also includes the administrative cost now once you have found out the cost of goods manufactured now we will try to find out the cost of goods sold remember that all the goods manufactured need not be sold in the same period there may be a different sales figure than the manufacturing figure for example you might have produced 50 uh, units during the period but you have sold only 40 units during the period now we are focusing on the cost of goods sold means exactly how many goods sold and we are trying to find out the cost of goods sold now continuing with our example the cost of goods manufactured which we have calculated 50000 rupees will come here cost of goods manufacture this is 50000 rupees now in this 50000 rupees we will add opening finished goods that is the cost of opening finished goods suppose the cost of opening finished goods was 20000 rupees now suppose the cost of opening finished goods man lije yahan par 20 units of finished goods was already there at the beginning of the period opening finished stock was already there 20 units you have produced 50 units during the year and there was a closing finished goods also of 10 units now what we are trying to do we are trying to find out the cost of opening finished stock let's assume the opening finished stocks cost was 20,000 rupees we will add this into the cost of manufacture assume that the cost of closing finished goods was 10,000 rupees you have to deduct the closing finished goods cost now 50 plus 20 70 minus 10 it will come 60,000 rupees now 60,000 rupees what you are getting is the cost of goods sold means whatever goods you have sold the cost of the same is reflected here but remember this is not the total cost remember that this is not the total cost we have to add the selling and distribution cost as well that is selling and distribution overheads we have to add to the cost of goods sold let's say this is 30,000 rupees so selling and distribution overhead cost 30,000 rupees now we are adding the last we are adding the selling and distribution last at the end to find out the total cost of sales or total cost so here we are getting a total cost or cost of sales also we say to it so so there is always a confusion among the student what do you mean by the cost of sales so there is a cost of goods sold and cost of sales so remember that there is a difference of selling and distribution overhead once you add this selling and distribution overhead to the cost of goods sold so cost of good sold when you add selling and distribution overhead you get the cost of sales and after that we move to the profit part that is now here we will try to find out what was the total sales made during the year or during the period as the case may be suppose the total sales made during the period was 1 lakh 30 thousand rupees 
and the cost of sales was 90,000 as we have already calculated it. Now deduct this cost of sales from the sales or total cost we can say deduct the total cost from the sales you will get the profit. So profit is coming 40,000 rupees. This is your profit. Now after understanding the small small term now let's try to see the bigger picture with a graph or a diagram. So let's try to revise everything what we have studied till now in the cost sheet. We will start from here. This is the starting point and this is the end point for calculating the profit. Now at the starting we add direct material consumed and direct labor cost to get the prime cost. But remember here you have to adjust the opening raw material and closing raw material. Remember always opening item will be added and closing item will be deducted. So here you have to do the adjustment of opening and closing of raw material to get the prime cost. After that in the prime cost you have to add the factory overheads to get the factory cost or works cost. But remember when you will add the factory overhead you have to do the adjustment of a WIP that is the cost of work in progress opening work in progress and closing work in progress you have to adjust in this stage along with the factory overhead to get the factory cost and after that you just simply have to add the administrative cost to get the cost of manufacture or cost of goods manufactured now here the first stage completes now if you want to switch to cost of goods manufactured to cost of goods sold there is only one adjustment that is you have to adjust the finished goods opening stock of finished goods and closing stock of finished goods you have to adjust here to move from cost of goods manufactured to cost of goods sold and eventually once you add at the last you add the selling and distribution overhead to the cost of goods sold you will get the total cost or it is also known as cost of sales and at the end once you deduct this total cost from the sales you will get the profit or loss as the case may be. Now again remember as far as cost sheet is concerned pure cost sheet is concerned we cover all the item till this point that is up to the total cost is covered in the cost sheet however you may extend this cost sheet to cover the sales and profit figure as well now in the next video we will be analyzing what will be the items of cost which will come under this category that is what are the item of expenditure which will come under factory overhead and what are the expenditure which will come under administrative or selling and distribution overheads and what are the item which will be covered under this direct material consumed. So we will try to analyze the items where they should go and apart from this we will also discuss about the production account and also 
we will see the difference between the cost sheet and the production account in the next video.